and I'm delighted to, uh, to ask Mr. Mayor Shitrit to uh, take the podium and give us a perspective from the Near East, or the, perhaps we should say. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. First, let me start with thanks to Mr. Thierry for inviting me to be here. It's a pleasure to be here in this uh, forum and to meet these wonderful people. It's a horizon widening for me and for my friends, which came from Israel as well. Let me as well thank the Moroccan government and His Majesty the King Mohammed VI for the warm hospitality that they're giving us here. For myself and on behalf of my friend, Mr. Amir Peretz, who's sitting here, the former Defense Minister of Israel in the past, we feel at home. Both of us had been born in Morocco. He was born in a small village which called Ujad. I was born in a small town called Ksarasuk, or today Roshidia in the south of Morocco. And we really feel home. And thank you very much for this warm hospitality. We feel really home anytime we came to Morocco. I think the Moroccan government really uh, needs, in my opinion, that worthwhile your claps for <clears throat> having us such warm hospitality in Morocco. And thank you very much. <laughs> I, I thought about what to talk about when we speak of security. We can speak about this for hours, and I thought what to speak about. Yesterday, I made some kind of uh, rehearse in my mind. Mr. Kamura said he, he needed 11 minutes. I thought I need half an hour, but of course, <laughs> it's impossible. I tried to limit myself in the 10 minutes that we have. And my question is, you feel secure? are you feeling secure in your countries? It is a question. And I believe that if we were feeling secure in countries, maybe we will not be here talking about it. What is the meaning of security? Is security is the physical possibility to protect yourself from a war against different countries which want to occupy you or anything else? I'm not sure that the definition of security is still the same. The 21st century have changed, in my opinion, the definition of security. Security is not only physical existence. Maybe security, from my point of view, would be also security for people to have an access to a normal food, to a clean water, to electricity, to health services. Isn't it less important than security, than physical security? I don't think it's less important. I think it's important and almost in the same. And I'm saying it because I think when we're dealing with security, Part of the problem is what creates insecurity? What makes us insecure? If I would ask in the United States, in the 8th, in, excuse me, in the 10th of September, are you feeling secure? Everybody will say, yes, we are secure. The United States is the superpower of the world. We are very secure. 11th of September changed it upside down. And I'm connected to food and water and electricity, etc., because poverty is a very fertile ground to manipulate people to go towards extremism and fundamentalism and terrorism that had been used very, very fantastically by the terror organizations and those who are supporting terror and threat the world with terror. Today, the war is not any more traditional war that you have to defeat a different other army, and then you finish the war. A big superpowers like the United States and others today are, a matter of fact, paper tigers, because they cannot overcome a guerrilla groups which are fighting against big powers without really destructing everything. That's the reason why big superpowers today are not effective anymore in fighting those small groups. And it cannot be done by any country by itself. I wish we were success to create some kind of world of global governance. That may be the only way to effectively fighting terrorism. But it's not exist, seriously. I agree 100% with the analysis of Mr. Blackwell yesterday, which made an analysis of the situation of the global governance, so-called United Nations, more and more reports in failure and almost everywhere. I absolutely agree with him. I don't know why the countries have to take any more this United Nations the way it acts, when they have full majority automatically for anything that contradicts any one of the full majority uh, groups in the United Nations. 
It's quite weird that the Security Council of the United States are concluding countries like uh, Lebanon or Iran. It's unbelievable that they should supposed to deal with security in the world. It's quite weird that the Council of Human Rights have a majority of countries which have no human rights at all, and they're controlling, trying to judge other countries which have maybe some mistakes sometimes. So why do I have to take it? And I agree to the discussion that had been done here yesterday about changing these situations. We have to fight for it. It is right to be changed. Terror in the world today is not anymore the small groups of people who are fighting against a big power. It is international network, very sophisticated, very rich, manipulating the democracies, using democracies against themselves. They have a very clear targets, making the world fundamentalist Islamic. They have no limits. They're willing to do everything possible in their mind, in their hands, in order to achieve that goal. And I'm sorry to see that democracies have failed even to define what is terror. I think the definition of terror is achieving political goals by violence. This definition had not been accepted 